Hello, good morning everybody, it's Bruce. This is a review of this Fiat 500 rental car. I'm over here in the Grand Canaria Island and we have this rental car for the week. Actually tomorrow we're, we're returning it. So I've been driving it for about six days now. Well, first of all, I like how the car looks. I think the body lines are nice. It's, I think, a cool looking car. Obviously this isn't the best example with this damage here and the factory wheels, but generally I think the shape looks pretty good. Of course that's subjective. Not everybody's gonna like that. <clears throat> so let's look, take a look inside. Well, first we can take a look in the back. I like this uh, big opening hatch and surprisingly for such a tiny car, there's some room in the back to you know, store your things. Um, my wife's walking sticks fit in here, fully extended, that's pretty good. We were able to put all of our luggage back here. And it still has back seats also. Now they're not that big, but for somebody who's medium to small size, you can actually fit back there. I can fit back there. If you're a big guy or girl, then probably you won't fit very comfortably. I haven't actually rode in or sat in the passenger seat. I've been driving. But <clears throat> I can say from the driver's point of view, everything's laid out pretty nice. I like the position of the steering wheel, the position of the shifter, uh, the seating, the v visibility is good, the gauges are fine. Um, one thing that's a little bit unusual is the, the windows, uh, power window switches are here in the middle. But once you get used to that, that's no problem also. I guess one small nitpick I would have is I don't really like the rate. I don't like buttons for my radio controls. I like, I like this, the, uh, the old style, um, knobs better. Now one thing that's not too good about this particular model, this particular one, is the engine. This is, well, at least in my opinion, but you have to keep in mind it's not a sports car. This car is not a sports car. It has a 1.2 liter um, gasoline engine, which produces just, I think, 60 or 70 horsepower. So it's um, pretty darn slow, you could say, for sure. Uh, even with the manual transmission, it's probably one of the slowest cars I've ever driven. And I've driven a lot of slow cars, including, you know, 1970s Dodges with slant six engines and four cylinder S10 pickups from the 90s. But I think this is even slower. This really doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> but um, it, it, just to get you to point A to point B, it does work. And we've been going up and down these very, very steep mountains for the past uh, week with you know, it's slow. It, it's slow. You have to slow down and go into first gear or second gear a lot of times and wind out the engine to five, six thousand RPMs, but you do get there eventually. So it does work. If you're not at all, at all interested in going fast, then this 1.2 liter uh, engine does work. Uh, if I were to ever buy a car like this, which I don't really think I would, I like the styling, but I just can't see myself buying such a small car. Um, if I did though, I would definitely want a more powerful engine. I mean, I don't need the race car version, but or whatever they might have, but uh, at least something with around 100 horsepower would be a lot better because you can really feel it on the highway. This has no power after 80 miles per hour. You, you, it takes forever to sell, accelerate. I don't know what the top speed is, but I, I think the, <laughs> the gauges say, I don't know, 220, yeah, 220 kilometers an hour. But, uh, oops, there's no way this car can go 220 kilometers an hour. I don't think so, anyway. I will say the braking has been pretty good. We've been coming down a lot of steep roads and stuff, and uh, the brakes have never faded, and I've felt very confident with them. Even though, if I look at them here, they're very tiny. And I think they're even, yeah, I think that's a solid rotor also in the front. Oh, wow, and it actually looks like a drum in the back. I think it's a, a tiny drum in the back. Let's see if we can take a look underneath the car real quick. Looks like probably solid axle in the back here. 
the handling I, I like the handling it's a small tiny car so it's very very nimble which is coming uh, handy on some of these tiny roads in these tiny villages here in Gran Canaria the fuel economy so um, I don't know exactly what the you know fuel economy is on it but I do know I ran the tank almost completely empty and then filled it up and it only took uh, I think 30 liters of gasoline and here in Gran Canaria it's about one euro per liter so that only costs us like 28 uh, euros which is incredible I've never filled a car up for such a small amount of money and I don't know since like the 90s or early 2000s so it to me it seems like the economy is pretty good kind of funny with the name Fiat I have a feeling that Americans don't really like that name Fiat it makes you think of like the Federal Reserve like the Fiat fake money or something um, and it's a it's a European car other than BMW and Mercedes Volkswagen maybe they don't have such a great reputation but uh, I feel like this car is pretty tough I mean I don't know but it's a rental car so it's you know all kinds of people are driving it like idiots and whatever uh, so Euro car the rental car company seems to think it's pretty good quality tough enough low enough price and my feeling is driving it it feels pretty durable I mean I've driven it on some terrible roads on this vacation some terrible uh, dirt roads with just like gigantic potholes and it really runs fine like I, I feel I feel like the car is pretty solid so maybe I don't know maybe <laughs> I've never looked at the information but maybe um, it's not such a bad cheap car that people might have the impression that it is just because of its uh, because of its history or because of the reputation of the name or something like that I think that if you're in the United States maybe you should uh, consider it at least consider it if I was looking for a small car like that I mean I'm not saying for sure I would get that car because I don't know what the price is I don't know really anything about the other competition but I would definitely consider that car I put it on the list and you know look at the numbers and test drive them all it really seems seems like a good car to me I, I would definitely consider it okay hope you enjoyed this review um, see you guys later.